Now, don't give me any argument. The ice is gonna break! If you listen to me, you hillbilly punk who thinks the world's still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat! <laughs> Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So, whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. You are now tuned into the Truth Frequency. We are T F R T F R Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming in only three weeks. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is frantically out of control in a Chinese space station, falling to the Earth not knowing when he will hit because NASA forgot how to do math. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, then you might actually be in danger of being hit by a Chinese space station. For those of you listening to this on YouTube, you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern, and if it is not October 17th, 2017, where you are right now, then you are listening to a rerun, and that means if you call the show, you will not get me live. But you will be able to leave a message, so that's something. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery, Science is one thing, wisdom is another. Science is an edge tool to which men play like children and cut their own fingers. Who said that? Sir Arthur Eddington. Announcements, announcements. Who's got the announcements? I do. Flat Earth Conference, get on, well, the waiting list you're not going to get on. There's no more waiting list. Uh, the last two dozen tickets have been snapped up real quick, and there's a few people out there. I think I have one or two tickets that are be sent to me by people that, you know, for whatever reason cannot make it to the conference. If you need to be at the conference, then you're going to have to email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And if you're looking for press passes, man, you're going to have to lie, cheat, and steal uh, because you're going to have to let the conference people know if you're trying to come in with press passes. I know he's saving a couple out, but you got to be pretty big. Anderson Cooper, I'm looking at you. The Jeffrey Grupp debate challenge is still in effect. If you don't know what that is, ask somebody. The Big Money Challenge is also in effect. You want information on that? Email Kathy Dunson at paralandra77 at gmail.com. That's P E R A L A N D R A 77 at gmail.com. I still believe DITRH is doing his billboard, even though the conference is only coming up in three weeks. So you can look that up at a GoFundMe, a stranger's guide to flat earth billboard. And let's see if there's anything else on the announcements that I forgot. I don't think I did. No, I didn't. So, 
tonight's a call-in show. We're not uh, no special guests tonight. I know we had on last week, and I think the week before that. So tonight you can just call in the show, which is two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. That is two one three two three 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 nine nine eight or seven two zero eight nine seven six one 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 seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. And if you're calling in from the UK. You can call in at 442033932871. And if you just want to call and listen on your phone and you don't want to worry about me picking you up, you can call in 641-793-7117. And if it sounds, just so you guys know, it sounds like I'm a little under the weather. I am. I don't know. I've got a little bit of a headache, a little bit of a fever. Uh, trying to shake it just shouldn't be anything. But I figured, you know what? The show must go on. So I'm here anyway. I may die tomorrow. No, I'm probably not going to die tomorrow. But uh, you, you know how that goes. So let's see. Do we have any colors? Yes, we do. As a matter of fact, first one of the day out of the gate is going to be 401 area code. Ready? Here we go. 401 area code. You are on live with Strange World right now. What's going on? Hello, Mark. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome. Uh, yeah. I uh Max calling from uh Rhode Island on the mm-hmm. coast. And uh long time listener. Uh first time pain in the ass caller. <laughs> okay. So, I no, I'm just kidding. I don't want to be a pain in the ass. But no man, I, I love your show. Uh, I've been in Flat Earth now for probably like uh about seven months. And um, you know, I don't know, man, it's just awesome stuff blowing my mind like every day. Yeah. And uh I and honestly, you said it best. It just, it was literally out of uh, conspiracy theory boredom yeah. that I got into, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it was like the last kind of stupid one that I hadn't even looked at. And, you know, now I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm, absor- I'm, I'm consumed, you know? Awesome. Crazy. That's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. I, you, well, you know my story, and, and I, I believe there's a lot of other people that if you've been in conspiracies long enough, you think you've seen it all, but you haven't, turns out. There's uh, there's a couple right. out there that nobody's really... Well, I mean, every again, everybody's heard about it, just nobody's bothered to look into it. And if you really want to... If you're into conspiracies right now, and this first time you're hearing this little statement about Flat Earth, I advise you to stay away from it. Don't do it. Because if you do... Right. That's it. You're never coming back from it. And then the other conspiracies, you'll just lose a taste for them. I mean, yeah, you'll be into them a little bit, but not as, not as passionately as, as Flat Earth. So, anyway, what, uh, yeah. what, what, what else is on your mind? Well, I, uh, I guess I, I'd also like to, to say that I, I'm, a, I'm a biblical Flat Earther, so I mm-hmm. come from that uh, you know, line of thought. And uh, I, I would also like to say that I, I definitely owe you and Rob Skeeter uh, Rob Skiba, uh, probably a, de- a great uh, debt of gratitude because you were the first two channels that I really got into, you know, and then later I kind of got into some of Dean Odell stuff. And now I probably have about, you know, eight or 10 channels that I, that I watch. And, nice. uh, but I, what I also would like to say is the, uh, it's a couple of things I was noticing recently was like that. You remember that big star alignment thing that, uh, you know, what was it, September 23rd with the uh, references to like the revelation verse. Uh, I'll say yes. I'll say that I know a little bit about it, but go, go ahead. Continue that, that train. Well, basically what I, what I noticed, what I noticed with that is that, uh, if you, if anybody was watching that, I mean, that was amazing, but you, you had like Mercury, Venus and Mars, and they're all going like one way across the sky pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. But then like all of a sudden Jupiter is going the same way. And then Jupiter hooks back and starts like going the other way. And literally was like doing circles inside the the quote womb of Virgo for like nine and a half months. Well, all the other planets keep going by. Jupiter's like doing a, uh, a, you know like loops. Uh, that's like that is completely impossible. I mean, wow. heliocentric model. Right, like, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like these things are all going like way like way different directions. I'm just like whoa 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 whoa. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I don't know. It, I just like to throw that out there. You can't Interesting. Have, well, these planets go up this way, and this one go in the other way. You can't, you know. Right. So. Interesting. Interesting know. stuff. I, I like it. Yeah. Right. And um, 
I guess the only other real uh, thing I, I'd like to, to share is that uh, sometimes I know people call up and uh, or, or you probably get a gazillion emails about full call pendulums. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, well, I, I tell you what, I'm actually looking at the website right now. It is called academypendulums.com, mm-hmm. academypendulums, one word, dot com. And if you go there, uh, it, 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 it's right basically on their homepage. They actually say, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, the, the Academy Pendulum Kits include one magnetic drive system is used to keep the ball swinging continuously. All right? Okay. <laughs> so that means that it's not because of gravity or anything else. They're saying that that magnetic drive system is what, you know, makes the whole oh, thing sure. keep going. Sure. So, it's one of, it's one of the know, questions that, we put out there, which was, who? okay, how is this? how is the pendulum being started? And in what orientation is it being is it being shot out there? It's 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 an excellent question. So, yeah. so yeah, the, the pendulums and the lunar eclipse thing, I kind of struggled with those for a while, but um, I'm I'm completely past it. You know, those were good. Like the last. Uh, you know. So, anyway, man, listen, I know we probably got uh, you know you got to take about five or six calls from Andy and Ross, so I didn't want to cut into their time tonight. <laughs> well, they're actually, I believe it or not, I have not seen them on the list yet. So who okay. knows? Who's knows? Who knows what's going on with those guys? Yeah. All right, man. Well, I All just right. want to. I guess I'll let you go in and get on to other people. But All right. Uh, love. Uh, you know, I'll try to check in every uh, month or so, maybe. All right. Well, thank you very much for reaching All right. out. All right. Th- thank you. Thank you for putting yourself out there so so I can see it and and learn learn about this whole thing. You, you know? are you are very welcome. All right, man. All right. See ya. All right. Talk to you later. <laughs> All right. Well, that was our first call. And we'll pick up our second call in just a minute. Just to remind you guys, the phone number is 213-233-3998 or the old number, 720-897-6111, which I also forward to uh, this, which actually I saw a friend of mine call in just now. I feel bad because like, if people are calling me and it's a personal call. I actually see them come in and they go to the radio station. It's like, wait, why is this number? They probably took, probably took them a while to figure it out. Anyway, uh, let's pick up another one. Let's do 612 area code. 612 area code, you're on the air with Strange World. Hey, hey, Mark. West Face Flat Earth News Talk. Wait for it. Go. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. West from Slat Earth News. How are you today, sir? I am fine. How are things where you are? Not too bad, not too bad. I was on Patricia Steer's show last uh, on Thursday. Cool. Had to uh, talk you up through the whole show. <laughs> um, yeah, They were just totally bashing you. So I, I would to imagine. You. No. <laughs> totally joking, man. Oh, I know. Uh, uh, Man. No, I've been working uh, uh, two hours ahead of work every day, you know, out here at the prison. And um, <laughs> so that's one of the reasons why I didn't call in the last couple of times. Gotcha. So it's like when they offer you overtime, you grab it. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Overtime okay. is not an easy thing to get nowadays. So it's it's good that you're on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. But the nice thing is, is I can kind of, I, I tootled away from where I was working. Nobody even batted an eye, so, yeah, I had to come out and say hello to you. I had nothing on the flat earth side, got nothing, just called in to say hi. Oh, well, thank you. That's awesome. Thanks thanks very much for doing that. So. And I'm almost done with my flat earth song. I am halfway, almost three-quarters of the way done. Cool. When I get it, I will post it and send it off to you. Awesome. Awesome. I have, a, I have a quote for you from the peanut gallery, of course. Of course. Of course. The quote goes something like this. If you can't explain what you're doing and why you're doing it to any intelligent layman, that really means that you don't understand it yourself. And that is from Alan Bromley. I wonder, you know, I can read into that in a, a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. Kind of, kind of like, yeah, hey, dude, get the... If you're if you're not going to talk about it, get off, get off yeah. the line. Stop calling. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I could do it a couple different ways. He's just taking a shot at you. 
That's all. I gotta have I gotta have him on my show again. You should. Yes. You should. Yeah, he he he's just fun to talk to. Yep. He's got some really cool insights that you just kind of like. One of those things that you go, hmm. Never thought about that either. Yeah. So bouncing back and forth between the globe and the flat Earth. But he brings up a lot of good points that you have to stop and think about. Yep, I would agree wholeheartedly. We totally argue over the uh, the satellite issue. Oh uh, no, he won't let satellites die. But again, I again, I don't yeah. think that there are no as a double negative. I think there are satellites up there, but how they're being suspended is a whole other thing. I do not think they're put up by rockets. Yeah. That's where he and I may yeah. differ. So. That's where him and I differ, too. Yeah, and, uh, that's fine. But at the same point, he did bring up one. He said, what if there are, are like three layers, three or four layers, and like in this one layer is the sweet spot? Maybe. Where you actually have something in there. And it, it's possible. I'm not ruling it out. I sure. mean, who knows? It yeah. could be a real thick, like, like we have talked before, a real thick layer of, of liquid. Or yeah. plasma or something that's similar to water, and once you get it in there, it just stays in there. Is it? Get, are you moving at seventeen thousand miles an hour? I doubt it. I doubt it too. But hey, hey, if if that's what it ends up being, I am not going to lose any sleep over it. So, any right. Uh, right. anything else before we I, mm-hmm. I send you off into the night? That's about it. Shout out to Patricia Steer, Mark. Uh, Zulu, uh, Brian, uh, oh, and of course, Peanut Gallery. <laughs> nice. Everybody out there, everybody in the uh, Flat Earth community, check okay. me out next week. I will be having another show. And as usual, Mark, I always send you a link so you pop in whenever you can. Okay. Sounds good, man. All right. Later, Dater. All right. Bye bye. All right, let's jump right into it. Let's do uh, 727 area code. 727, you are on the air with Strange World right now. Good afternoon, Mark Sargent. Hey, how are you? <laughs> you, hear, you hear me? Hey, um, you remember show 29? Show show 29? Yeah, back to the past, huh? Wow, don't tell me you actually called in on show 29. Yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> Wow. The letter, the letter, remember? Uh, I, you know what? That's so, that's a hundred shows ago, man. I would have a yeah, tough time I recalling know, that. But the fact that you remembered it is, is impressive. So what's, uh, what's on yeah, your mind? Well, um, remember the, the radar, radar maintainer operator? Oh, was that you? From, uh, from the S. Oh, that's, that's me. Man. Oh, geez. you know, I, I, I had I taken the time to actually look up Show Twenty Nine, I would remember that. I know, how, I know. How, I how's it going? How's it going? Well, right now I'm a civilian, so that's good. That's good. And yeah, and um, and there's there's a lot of things that, that that I wanted to to talk about because there's a lot of people hang up on gravity. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. And and one one thing bef- before anything else, before I left mm-hmm. the, the service, they came up with this ground system. It's called ground satellite system. Gr- ground shadow light? No, ground satellite. Oh, ground satellites. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yes. So it um it actually they they said uh, we're gonna communicate from the ground. We don't need we don't need any more space satellites. We can do everything from the ground, and it was tactical stuff, you know, that you could take anywhere. Really? And it it, it was my yeah yeah <laughs> it's crazy. And they literally crazy. called it a ground satellite system. Yes, yes, and 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 I, and then it, it I just blasted out laughing because you know we we, we talk we. We all talked about about the GPS, the ground positioning system, right? Which is that's what it is. <laughs> wow. Everything is ground based. There's nothing up there. Um, and and I know and I know that you think there's something up there, but the 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 only things up there would be would be high flying um, 
airplanes. Um, well, I mean, there's there's some uh, balloons. Oh, man. There's some balloons carrying some stuff. I know that. Oh, oh yes, yes, the balloons. Yes, I, but yes, that's they're not true. going up that high. Yes, exactly. And also, you know, for the people out there just wondering uh, about uh, satellites and 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 gravity, I, I don't, you know, it's just we live in a magnetic world, hmm? and the magnetism is just to hold up stuff, not hold things down, because there's nothing to hold down to. There's nothing that needs us to be hold. I mean, nothing needs to be out there magnetically holding us down because mm-hmm. we weight, we have mass. This is a flat plane. So nothing needs to hold us down. I hear now, you. The, the sun, the moon, those need to be held up. Um, the, a, a, anything else that's up there needs to be held up and Everything else is for energy. It's like it's like the Tesla principle. Everything is going around in a circle, in a three sixty circle, to give us energy. Yeah. So it's. I mean, it, it, another thing is is the. Um, oh, I just lost my my. my That's all right. Take your time. So that was one thing, and about the magnetic field. Mm-hmm. The um, the, the uh, I I heard I heard today your your last show from um the the matter expert um uh, the guy from um uh, the towers from from the oh yeah the air traffic the, controller uh, yeah yes I was listening to that today I yes. said and then, and then you said the time I said well I can't call mm-hmm. and and then um I at at that time I was thinking because I I've been listening to your show since. In Celacho, I, I mean, I skip some. I stay out of the searching and listening for a while, and try to concentrate on the, on my new job, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But this, you know, there's a lot of people out there that they know that the moon like the moon landing is it's, it's all fake. Yeah. But 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 still, if, if you go further, they they say no, they they just didn't go to the moon. Like, but there's still something out there. Right. And I was trying to read this. This is what it is. Okay, hold on. Okay. So I got it right here. I, I'll call back on another show or whatever. Oh no, no, I know, I know. You you got about uh four minutes until the until we get a break. What? Is it long? No. There we go, man. I should have marked it before. Probably. It's right here. It's really cold because I'm on. Okay. I'm really cold, but hey, okay. there, there it is. But you know, I I actually bought a new Bible. Okay. And for people out there who who are like the Jewish Christ, you know, Jewish Messianic stuff and and all that stuff, and I don't know why people that are biblical don't don't read. As sometimes it says on. on yeah. So go ahead. On Genesis, right? Genesis. Uh, on Genesis. So it's called the. It's it's basically translated from the Jewish to the to English. It's it's like a new type of version. This guy just took the first word and whatever it means, like Rosh Kiva, and he did the Bible. Mm-hmm. So he says on 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 Genesis one six, it says God said. Let there be a dome in the middle of the water. Let it divide the water from the water. Yep. Come on. I know. What, what else do you need from? I mean, what? I agree. And yeah. All, all, yeah. <laughs> yep. That's that's why I'm, when I made the website, it was called Enclosed World because yes. it's it's enclosed. I mean, it's not for me and a lot of other people. It's not just flat. It's enclosed. So enclosed. yeah. Yep, that so that that verse right there hit the nail on the head. What what is is getting my mind right now is okay. So okay, so okay, so I'm here. I'm I I, I forgot about all the media that's going on right now. Every show, huh. every show has to do with NASA. Every show has to do with space. Every show that I watch, and my wife and I, you know, I fly our and we're watching and laughing. <laughs> really. I, 
they have gone full on strength. Every movie is about space now. Every movie yeah. is about you know, and on, and and. And now I think Brad Pitt is doing one, but he's pissed off about it. <laughs> <laughs> and and he he's he's in a space or whatever, but I, I don't think he's happy about it. You know, there's, no, I don't think there's so, gotta either. be some artists out there that know the truth. I would think so. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and nobody nobody thinks about this stuff. I mean, like nobody thinks about it. People like call to your show and then they make questions and like um. The the uh, air traffic controller, he you know he has some doubts, and he's biblical, and, mm-hmm. and that's why I called today, I think, because I ha- I had to read that verse up on radio. I hope he's listening, and and I appreciate what what uh, what he did. He called in. I Excellent. enjoy the show. I enjoy his his testimony and all that. I really cool. did. I that's really awesome, did. man. That's great. Any uh any shout outs? Because we're gonna go to break here pretty soon. Anybody you want to say hi? Well. To? Uh, that's listening right now. I don't know. That knows me. <laughs> but I, I shout out to, to. I haven't seen a show from Patricia for a long time, or the the other flat is when when I started this um, two years ago. So, but anyway, shout out to them and let them keep on going. All right. And I, who knows at some point uh, what I do? I um, I just want to stay in, in the low key because I don't I don't know I. I because I I don't care right now what they're doing. I just I just care about what's out there right now. I sure. Mean, how how who who how easy? Uh, what's I mean? In the Bible, is a lot of stuff, but to put it in your head, right? And imagine it. That's yeah. But yep. anyway, Mark, uh, great talking to you again. Thank All right, you. man. And just keep doing what you're doing. All right. Thank you very much for calling in, and hopefully we'll talk soon. Sure. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, before, you know what? We're going to break here in just a minute or two. So, in fact, not even a minute. So, phone number again to call in. we got a couple calls on hold. And so, I, the next one we'll pick up will be 701 area code. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3998. Stay tuned. Tuned into the truth frequency. Your protection from deception. TLR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four. And we're doing some calls, because why not, right? Oh, yeah, by the way, the show is probably going to be called, what, three weeks till the convention? Because there's only three weeks left. Very excited. Uh, Let's see. Who's on the line? Let's try 701 area code. 701, you are on live with Strange World. What is on your mind right now? Yes, hi, Mark. Hi. Uh, Sheila, you're traveling through Tennessee. You're you're driving as we speak. I, I am, I am. This traffic light is not bad. Oh, that's good. Okay. I got a got a hand. Uh oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> and as she was saying that, uh she got cut off because of a horrible disfiguring accident. No, I'm sure it's it's not that. Oh wait, she's back. Hang on one sec. Let's see if I can find her again. Uh so you didn't crash. Yeah. Okay. No. No. <laughs> That's good. I'm. I'm here. I'm here. I have. A, I have a Bluetooth on. No, I didn't crash. No, I. I just pushed a button on my Bluetooth. That's okay. It happens to the best of us. 
So, all right, wait, all right, did you push that button again? You did, didn't you? Now I can't hear you. My, you know, oh, if you are do, you there? I am. What did you hit this time? <laughs> Hello? Oh. No, no, I didn't yeah. push the button. No, that's weird. You, you, you faded out for a I second. Did. Anyway, go, go on with wh whatever is on your mind. Go ahead. What do you got? <laughs> okay. This is a very, this is lagging. Ooh, yeah, it may be lagging pretty badly. Okay, so the, the last, uh, go, go last week, your, your kid. Tell you what, I'll just call back. <laughs> okay. Okay, go ahead, call back. Okay. And she's gone. And I promise I'll pick up the other callers. Oh, look, there's Beverly Hills, California. That would be Andy and Ross. Can't wait to pick them up. And we will, I swear. But we got to pick up uh, North Dakota. Hopefully she'll come in and then... Um, here we go. All right, go ahead and just start talking about the guest that was on last week, because that's what you were started with. Okay, now can you hear me clearly? Yes. About the lag. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, yes. Um, I was I was kind of um, I I called in too late last week to get on, but I was going to ask him um, because everybody was asking him other questions. But I was kind of surprised nobody talked about how if the Earth is spinning a thousand miles an hour, how do the traffic air controllers manage to line up the planes for uh, landing if they're on a north or south you know, uh, orientation mm. or a little bit of Nobody asked that. Good I was, question. I'm a little amazed by that. You're right. So, if, if, yeah, I was gonna, yeah. yeah. You're right. If, if a plane is going from north to south, their relative speed on the spinning earth should change and change pretty quickly. Because remember, if it's 1,000 miles at the equator and it's zero miles an hour at the North Pole, well, it's quite a, you'd be, you know, wouldn't take that long, you know, even a few, even a few miles an hour is going to make a difference. So yeah, good question. So, I, maybe hopefully he'll email me or call and, and answer that question. Okay. Because yes, I would think they would have, the plants would have to adjust continually to make a landing because that earth is spinning underneath them. Right. You know, so they have to, you know, anyway, so that was one question. Okay. And then... I, I'm sure you've seen you know, about the eclipse and how some of the people who've been taking pictures of it showed that the moon was somewhat transparent. Mm -hmm. The sun was coming, you know, shining behind it. Right. And also that there was some, some people were like looking actually at the sun itself and saying that perhaps the sun is actually self-eclipsing. Right. Um, I don't know if you, if you saw that. So. Oh, yeah. No, I, I've I talked to some of those guys. That. I thought that was so interesting, and then I, I, we've been thinking about it. I thought, well, what about the moon? Is it possible that the moon itself, when you're going through its phases, is just self self eclipsing on a very slow level and oh, yeah. repeating itself? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the first thing I jumped on when I saw the solar eclipse, which was, of course. You know, once once Mike Helmick did his video when he was saying, hey, the sun's self-eclipsing, of course it made sense because the moon, we can do that now with the moon, but we never think about, you know, because with, with the moon, you have, you know, half moon and a crescent moon and all that other fun stuff. But with, with the sun, you always see a full sun. It's never a half sun or a quarter sun. It's always the full sun. And so right. when when he said that, it's like, of course, why didn't, you know, why didn't I think of that before? And it was it's the obvious solution. Because of it, as the, you know, it was told in Enoch, uh, the book of Enoch, that, you know, the sun and moon were made for, you know, to keep the time, the seasons and all that. But the right. moon is a, a daily, kind of a daily, monthly thing. So, right. um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so great. So other people have thought about that, including you, which is great. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I just, I just wish it could be concretely, you know, uh, you, know, you know, concretely, what am I trying to say here? Well, if you if you want uh, the <laughs> best video, the best video I've seen on it so far is by a guy named Mike Helmick. So, and that's his channel name. It's okay. H-E-L-M-I-C-K, -H Mike Helmick. I, okay, okay. 
and and Did he's you got. Have some, him on as a guest? Uh, I haven't had him on yet, but I will. Wait, oh, okay. no, wait, no, that's true. I did have him on a guest, as a guest. I had him and D. I'm sorry. Wow, that wasn't even that long ago. I had him and DITRH. Well, I'm not, I'm not feeling well, so I'm a little out of it. Um, I know, I know. I'm sorry you're not feeling. Yeah, well. it's all right. You know, these things happen. But the uh, yeah, I had him and yeah, I know Peanut Gallery is now chiming in. Yes, you did. It's like yeah, I know. I I remember now. Uh, so yeah, he and DITRH were were both doing a show on that. So that was uh, that was a good show, and uh, I recommend anyone who is into the Eclipse thing to to look at it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Ah. Uh, right. Well, the only other thing I can think of is um, did you catch uh, yesterday's uh, show from Jaronism? Um. Yes. Remind me what's what was it on? Now I I know he was well, going after well, NASA. Yeah, he was going after NASA, and he read a whole article that came from 1996 from a reporter who had been down there uh, watching the Columbia uh, uh, the Columbia liftoff. Um, but the reporter went on and on, and it, I, I I called into that show only to, to let them know that you know because um, I I was born in Cocoa Beach, and and that. Um, when the when the story talked about Cocoa Beach and the astronauts down there, it's like, well, this really hits home. <laughs> it's really really hits home for me because hmm. um, you know my mother was a uh, hostess at the Cape Colony in which the astronauts saw, and she knew the astronauts. And I think I've told you this before, but um, anyway, I, I, I called into that show and that's a brag. Hmm. I just wanted, wanted to let them know about that and that she had actually at one point. Because I had asked her, well, what's it like to work for NASA? This is way before I became a flat earther. She's gone now. She's, she's been, you know, um, she passed away several years ago. But um, she told me one time that she had, she knew a man called Werner von Braun because he was from Germany as well. Sure. And, of course, the name didn't ring a bell to me at the time, but now it does. I'm like, oh, my goodness. And I said, well, okay, what about him? And she said, he was a very evil man. I did not like him. <laughs> wow. Hey. Well, I mean, he was part yeah. of the Nazi Nazi war machine. He was yeah. not going to be. He was not going to be, you know, uh, uh, getting his own yeah. show on Nickelodeon. Let's put it that way. <laughs> no, no. But the thing, the, you know, the part about it was, you know, she she went through the war in Germany, and I'm sure she knew he was a Nazi. Uh, she just was very tight lipped about this guy, but she she did mention him. I was like. Hmm. So oh. now looking back on it, uh, yeah. Anyway, I just I just wanted to say that in case you because the article was very interesting. It went on about um, how NASA actually, you know, the, the the officials, the higher up officials, admit that they're nothing more than a propaganda arm for the United States government. Oh yeah. And that you know, the UK and uh, Europe and all them had their kings and queens to look up to and all that. But, well, America has many idols, but the, the primo, primo idol is uh, the space program. Right. Um, the technology of all technology. So uh, that's... Uh, yep, it is. It is, uh, it, it if is. you go back and listen to it, it was a very good article. You, you would find it um, right. a lot more. Yeah. Well, I will revisit that video. And, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Mark, and uh, good good luck at the conference. I really. Um, well, we still got a few weeks left. I may I may talk to you before then, yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the conference. Should be fun. I'm sure you are. Yeah. yeah. I've been anxiously uh, biting at the bit. So. Yep. Yep. I wanna I wanna get there and and see all the great people. Yeah. Well, you're gonna do great. Oh, so. thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All, all right. Hey, night. you drive safe. Talk to you soon. Okay, thank you. Okay. Right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, let's jump right into... Uh, you know what? I'm going to sing anyway. Start spreading the news. Mark is sick this hey. Tuesday night. Hey, what's going on? Uh, uh, that's sad. I'm sorry that you feel no, lousy. No, no, I hate you know what? I, I, I wouldn't be able to sleep anyway. So I figured, hey, let's do a uh, show. There you go. There you so, go. The show must uh, go on. What's going on in New York? Uh, not much. It's getting brisk out at night. It's, uh, I'm actually sitting out here with a 
two coats on. <laughs> really? Boots. Yeah. I mean, it's only like 55, 40, I mean, 45. It's not yeah, bad, but. It's still, you know, it's, it's mid-October. It's weird. Yeah, it just it always does that. It's hot, 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 and then, okay, it's winter time now. Mm. You know, it's changed. It was, it's not gradual anymore. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a windstorm coming in here tonight. Uh, if it was any earlier, we might be knocked off the air because the power went out up in the northwest, up where I am, uh, nice. about six six a.m. But we're we're back up and running at the moment. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, wind can do some serious damage. Yes, it can. Crazy. Like yeah. like uh, Ron White said, it's not that the winds are blowing; it's what the wind is a blowing. <laughs> yeah, nice. if you get hit with a Volvo, <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like that's awesome. Oh yeah, like well, yeah. Uh, don't, don't get me started on that. Look at uh, what was the movie with Bill Paxton? Was it Twister? Uh, where he was? Uh, yes. <laughs> tornado hunter. Cow. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Same wind, cow. <laughs> those winds are ripping around there so fast that if you're anywhere near it, the debris will destroy you. I mean, absolutely. Oh, yeah, you're getting sandblasted by yeah. cinder blocks. Oh, God. yeah, it would be awful. Yeah, so that last section where, you know, they're in that barn and there's metal tools everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, just... <laughs> yeah that's where I'm hiding. Yeah, that's where you're Yeah, oh, and, and too yeah, funny. it was too well, funny. I, mean, I, I get it, you know, mid-90s movie. You can, you can get away with it, but not now. Hopefully not. Although that movie Geostorm was going to be coming out pretty soon. Hoping that has a little. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Um, By the way, before I forget, uh, Peanut Gallery has a quote for you. You ready? Okay. Okay. It is science, like life, feeds on its own decay. New facts burst old rules. Then newly divided conceptions bind old and new together into a reconciling law. That's from William James. Mm -hmm. He also said that Twister was filmed in Oklahoma. Not surprising to anybody. Because that's called Oklahoma. It's called Tornado Tornado Alley. I mean, honestly, how can you even how can you even get insurance in Tornado Tornado Alley? Right. Especially if you have a mobile home. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, double wide, you might as well have a big tornado Hello? sticker on the roof. It says, hey, hit this place. Did I get dropped? No, you're here. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh-oh. Mark? Mark? Hmm. Having kind of a tough time. Let me check my connection. And there he went. That yeah, connection seems fine. I bet you it's on his side because he's using a cell phone. Uh, let's try it one more time. And then I promise, well, we, we may have time before the break. We'll see. All right. You're back on. Hey, I don't know what happened there. That was weird. That's uh, okay. It's it's probably a conspiracy. Probably. I, hey, I, I wanted to. Aliens and reverse vampires on that one. Definitely the reptilians. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. They're evil like that. Yeah. They hate electronics. Hey, um, speaking about all this, you know, tornadoes and stuff, though, did you look into the wildfires at all or anything? Oh, My, yeah, man. The what? The potential energy weapons that are used out there? Yeah. Uh, holy shit. I got, yeah. I got issues with some of the photos, you know? I mean, now, some of the guys are saying, oh, it, you know, those, it got so hot that it burned the car completely. Well, that's not necessarily true because the car is a fuel source. You have all those materials on it. They'll burn completely like that. No problem. Sure. But I have issue with the wheels melting. Of right. course, it's only the aluminum. The steel, it doesn't get hot enough. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't burn at a hot enough temperature to melt the steel. You'll get distortion in some panels because of what they're constructed of and the design and certain makes and models. But generally, it won't melt. It doesn't get hot enough. But the wheels will get a little bit damaged, aluminum wheels, very rarely that they melt significantly. These things, there were pools of aluminum running down the street. And the one photo, it stops right at the edge where the grass is burnt, and then nothing else is burnt around it. Right. And it got to get pretty hot to get to start the car with a fire using radiant heat. I mean, my mom's Jeep was parked six feet from her house when it burned to the ground 
Yeah. And the only thing that melted on that side was the plastic, the mirror, the moldings. That was it. Yeah. The car was fine. I replaced all those things and she drove it. Yeah. And tires. There's some interesting documentaries that are out there on, on this whole thing. And if you don't know what we're talking yeah. about, look up the because you know the reason why people are jumping to connections. Ooh, that's a t-shirt. Jumping to connections on this one is Yeah, I like that. Yeah, is that uh, because of the Judy Wood energy weapon documentary on the World Trade Center in 9-11, where yeah, she yeah. said, look, there was something fired at some of those really heavy steel columns that made them literally vaporize in midair, you know, and, and she had the footage to back it up. And I thought it was really intriguing. So when you look at the homes and you've seen the footage as much as anybody, I mean, there was neighborhoods mm-hmm. where it looked like 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 parts of a of a of a suburban neighborhood were just uh, it, honestly if you imagined a ufo coming in <laughs> and just lighting up a couple blocks, yeah and i mean not just yes. setting them on fire i mean disintegrating the homes just <laughs> you know just carving it out that, it's like, that's a weird thing itself that yeah. there wasn't rubble yeah, generally I, houses don't burn that complete yeah, I mean, it, it looked like it almost looked like tornado damage, in a way. It was that. Yes. It was yes. in fact even tornadoes yes. don't don't wipe the slate clean that well. And some of the houses were so s- surrounded by trees that it it didn't make sense that the house was completely gone and all those trees were still there. And not not that the that the um house would set the trees on fire, but they would have had to have been on fire to get the house on fire. Oh yeah. Yeah. And where, and where was the you know? bleeding, the bleeding edge of the fire? Meaning you had a house right next to a disintegrated house. Yeah, Crazy pictures. That, that, and that house didn't catch fire at all. And it was, and it was close. Nothing. And it was like, okay, how does that house yeah. literally get burned into uh, you? I mean, like a level playing field of ash. And the other house didn't even yeah. get singed, from what I could tell. So yeah, it was it was creepy stuff. And of course, you know the other thing which people are going to overlook. And of course, it's not even. It was amazing how fast it hit the news, and then it was out of the news, which was uh, right. how how quickly all the fires spread simultaneously. I mean, there was if you look at the like the patterns of where these fires were, there were these weird. I mean, it's yeah. a weird pattern. There were sections. It's like okay, there's no way they, those weather patterns could have burned those embers, pulled them that far over. And not burned anything between right. here and there, from when you're going from west to east. It was it was fascinating. So yeah, yeah. yeah. There's one of a development where there's a group of houses in the center, surrounded by a road, surrounded by trees, surrounded by houses, and only the houses in the middle are gone. right. Right. And all the trees everywhere are still there, and all the houses are still there. I'm like, Absolutely. what? And Weird stuff. Not, weird not, stuff. not to gloat, but I did call this because I said, look, I go, the only thing, I, the only way you're going to get out of this Vegas debacle, because the, the Vegas thing was horrible. It was just awful. There's nothing, nothing redeeming about that entire operation. The only way you're going to get out of it is to do yeah. another op really, really fast. And just like that, this, this fire thing happened. And I was going, oh, well, you know, we all know there's fires, right? So it's, nobody looked at it twice in, in the beginning until the photos came out. It, it, you, if you could have just yeah. said, oh, yeah, there's wildfires in California, it's like, oh, what else is new, right? But then you saw the photos, you're like, holy smokes, these aren't your run-of-the-mill fires. Yeah. These are a whole other animal. So, No, not at all. And I'm, I'm, all. I'm, half to, I'm half to, tempted to think that the, the – not to go on a gloomy side here, but the, the death count was much higher because I don't think a lot of those people got out. Yeah. There's a picture of a house – and it's only on fire on the inside. Right. And there's a picture of a car that is on fire and the door panels, the paint is ignited and there's nothing close enough to get that lit like that. Uh, uh, I, I, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Doesn't um, make sense. Hey, I trust you. Hey, I, 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 I got a quote too. Oh yeah, we got, we got. Well, I, not only am I a firefighter, but I'm an insurance weasel and i've been doing it for a long time and i've seen burned cars from all different deals yeah. and there's some weird stuff there yeah even if you weird claim stuff. it was even if you i claimed think people it was, should look at it if even if you claimed it was arson you would be tough pressed to pull that off with arson yeah you know yeah. what i mean i mean unless you're talking yeah. military arson which is really what we're talking about here one guy 
One guy said, where are the toilets? And I, th- I thought about that. Toilets don't burn. The ceramic. Oh, they might crack. Like crack. They don't burn. Yeah, they'll be there. Weird. You know, because if the water boils in it, maybe, you know, but... They yeah, if you, if you vibrate it to death, None. sure, maybe. If you use some sort of... Uh, I mean, Yeah, that was a weird let's, point. Let's face it, if you use a microwave beam... Who knows if a, a ceramic bowl filled with water would survive because you're superheating the water inside it so fast, maybe the water exploded. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they were talking about the glass in the cars, and no, that'll that'll melt, that'll shatter, because yeah. most of it, especially the tempered stuff, once it gets heated up, it'll just shatter. It's probably, you know, it might be there, I don't know. Um, I have a quote. Yeah, we got and. Uh, and this is, uh, well, I'll explain after. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Oh. And I, I, I don't think you'll get who, uh, who said that. I won't. Who said it? Dr. Seuss. That's good. That's a version of uh, I, all, all good things must come to an end. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just thinking about it because... I know I'm like everybody else is listening. I'm so excited about in a couple of weeks and it's already here and it's going to fly by. Cause we're going to be there and be like, what? Everybody's leaving already. What? Yeah. Just, yeah. It, I just, I know it's going to feel that way. So that's yeah. why I, I wanted to say that. Nice. <laughs> nice, man. Well, I'm doing the, I'm doing countdowns from this is three weeks and the next week will be two weeks. And the one after that will be, you know, one week. So uh, I'll be doing countdown shows nice. all the way till, to it. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's going to be great. I can't wait. I, cool. I just, I really can't. I just want to meet everybody and I warn all of you. I'm a hugger. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna, sorry. Can't help it. I'm just excited to meet other humans that are as batshit crazy as I am. Yeah. And, and by the way, just yeah. a side note, and I haven't really told anybody this, I was invited to the flat earth Australia conference just today no. yeah i know right it's awesome. gonna be i think it's gonna when be is in, that uh it's gonna be actually before the uk conference i think it's gonna be in march oh really what they're shooting at so really? and it's gonna be in sydney i believe and they're you know that video Jeez, that i show on some of my flight is that yeah i know right you do you know that video that i show on some of my stuff where that is that park that water park with the uh, the ae map in the middle of it and the guy's jumping yeah, from yeah. well, that's down there. That they're they're gonna kind of do part oh, of it around really? that park. Yeah, it's called Darling Park, down in Australia. Oh, cool. Oh crap, we're going to. Break. Yeah, you definitely got a stream from there. All right, awesome well, talking wait, no, to you, wait, Mark. Wait, wait, Keep no, it up. Sorry, Love not, everybody. Oh, we're, we're not going to break. That was oh. weird. I could have sworn I heard the music for a second there. That's weird. Oh, okay. I oh, honestly, I, I swear to God, I heard the music for like two seconds, like that somebody was cutting me in. Anyway, uh, any shout outs you got before we send you <laughs> off? And then after the break, uh, by the way, I will be picking up Beverly Hills. Definitely the usual suspects Candy, Nathaniel, Wes, Brian, you, Dave, everybody. Just I love all you guys. Keep it up. Stop the infighting. Who gives a shit? Get along and enjoy. I love, just enjoy life. And oh, and what is it? Be better to or be nicer to. To everyone else, treat, I forget. I treat up yourself. Your treat others better than you treat yourself. There you go. There you go. That's a good. Those are good words to live by. Well, thanks. Awesome. All right, man. Thanks. Have thanks for time. taking the time, Mark. Alrighty. Alrighty. Talk soon. As they say in Canada, peace out. <laughs> that was one of his worst exits ever. All right. On that note, uh, we are going to pick up Beverly Hills, California, uh, probably after the break, because uh, we don't have time to just intro into that. So the phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3998. And after California, just so you guys know, because I'm going to try to announce these if I can, uh, we're going to try a 254 area code. Hey, there's the music. It wasn't in my head. Maybe it was. I don't know. I'm not feeling well. Did I tell you that already? Hi. My name is Ella. And I'm... This 
is Truth Frequency Radio. The wicked ones obviously under heavy, heavy Masonic influence. <laughs> Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four, and you got to love that track, Major Kong, by one of our Flat Earth own, Chip Baker. He writes some great little intros. Love all his stuff. Okay, so it's a call-in show, 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3998. And yes, back by popular demand, we have Beverly Hills, California. Probably going to be Andy and Ross, unless they have somebody else in the room. But I think it's Andy and Ross's little secret, among other things. All right, Beverly Hills. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Yeah, you guessed right. <laughs> this is Andy. What's, what's going on? Let's go down there in beautiful Southern California. Oh, dude, it's been <laughs> so hot, 90 degrees every day Wow. in L.A. I w- and I was, yeah, okay, you know what, I, I got to ask, since I was there recently, as you know, during the meetup, and I, I had thought at one point that maybe you would go to the meetup out in Pasadena, and you just wouldn't tell anybody who you were. No, I would never do that. I'm a pretty sociable guy. Oh, okay. I would never do that. Right. <laughs> I, I couldn't get anyone to cover for me at work. That was ah, cool that's all right. Too. I tried. That's right. I worked yeah, at a restaurant yeah. in Santa Monica. It was a lot. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I, I my voice was so shot by the end of it. I was I was talking pretty much nonstop. People had all sorts of fun questions, and it was a, a good group. So what? Uh, so what's on your mind so, tonight? So so the, um so I heard you and Patricia talking in the last episode that you guys did, I think, about OJ, and I was going to ask you if you if you re- if you really believe OJ was the killer. Oh, absolutely! OJ was, was the killer. That? Oh no, he hacked him up big time. I mean, you you ask just about anybody, and I'm not you know I'm not a racist by any stretch. You ask anybody in the in the black community, you know about conspiracies, <laughs> then bring up then bring up OJ, and they'll be like, uh, yeah, next next topic, because oh no, L- OJ was. I mean, you're talking an, a big guy, an ex professional running back, Hall of Famer, mm-hmm. found out that his ex wife was dating some waiter. I don't know. Again, you know, maybe it was maybe it was something maybe it was something simple. Like he was told to come over to the house and pick up something and she forgot that he was coming over and he caught them in some sort of weird compromising position and he went berserk. You know, he took a freaking kitchen yeah. knife and he carved them up. I don't think it was premeditated. I think it was okay. a crime. Of, I think it well, was a crime. Offer, of, let, let me offer you another scenario. How about all right. That? Okay, here's another scenario. Well, it's not really my research, but there was a man named William C. Deer, and he has launched his own 20-year investigation since around 90, 96. He's been uh, researching this on his own, um, and he found out that, that Jason Simpson, who was O.J.'s 24-year-old son from, from a, uh, his previous wife, yeah. um, um, so his previous wife, that he was married to, that he has two kids with, right? He was married to her from a long time ago. And while he was married to her, he began to date Nicole, the blonde woman. And she was like a real young hostess at a restaurant. She was about 18 years old. And so this kid always blamed, and this kid, Jason, who was 24 at the time of the murders, he always uh, blamed uh, Nicole for breaking up his his mom and dad's marriage and, you know, messing up a whole bunch of stuff in his life. And not only that, but if you go through this kid's history, he has has been known to have these, 
his blackout, this blackout rage disorder, and he's been in and out of mental hospitals his whole life, and his records just show all of this, and he threatened, he, this is all before the murders. He, he had threatened his girlfriends at knife point. I think he even got, he even stabbed someone one time, and not, not only that, but he was a chef, and he, would, he was working at this restaurant called Jackson's, which is in Beverly Hills that I used to go to when I was younger. Yeah. It's actually owned by one of my friends. It's called Jackson's, and that's where he worked at. This is Jason Simpson. He worked at Jackson's restaurant, and he was a chef, and he was actually somewhat of a good chef. You know, they liked him. He had a pretty high position in the restaurant. And yeah. um, after that recital, that night of the murders, that night of uh, earlier the day, there was a famous, you know, the famous pictures of OJ at the recital, you know, with the kids that di- earlier that day yeah. uh, in the daytime. And they all went out to dinner afterwards. And they were supposed to go to Jackson's and he was getting ready to have the whole family there, except not OJ was not invited, but he was getting ready to have the whole family there. And they decided to go to that other restaurant because she didn't want to offend OJ or whatever. But anyway, that night he just flipped. And I'm telling you, it's looking like from everything I've seen, it's his son, Jason, who's still out here in LA somewhere running around. He's like 45 Ooh. years old now. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's not out there. That's not bad. And I hadn't, I hadn't heard of that angle. But that's not bad at all. In fact, right? it kind of it kind of reminds me of, and this is a little before your time because I was out in Boulder, Colorado when it happened, and I totally didn't do it. The uh, John Benet Ramsey case, where it, it, everybody in the inside knows that the father didn't do it, and that they're basically covering for the son. the The son was extremely jealous and unbalanced of his you know younger sister, who was you know one of those weird beauty queens at six years old, mm-hmm. and sure. and he freaking lost it and killed her. But rather than take the uh, rather than have his son go into a mental institution, you know, you got to save one of your kids. So they protected him. Mm-hmm. They used their money and they protected him. And the, the father was the one that was investigated, but he got had enough resources to get out of it. Whereas and OJ, who else would OJ ever cover for, you know, besides that's true. his own son, you know, like his son hacked him up and then called the stories that he called OJ up over to the scene right after the killing. So OJ was actually there. But his mind was blown at that point when he got there because what, of what his son had just done. His 24-year-old you know son who was a and, really and big, he, strong man also. He's very the, big, strong man. He's the he's only one that has any motive, real, real motive yeah. I, also. He hated Nicole. He had like a love-hate relationship with her. And nice. he had been known to creep her out. And he and this is all 100%. And That's, this guy was – and he was trained with knives and always had a bag of very sharp knives on him. He was a chef guy trained. And that's and that's that's very interesting because again they and they would have pinned it on OJ, absolutely would have pinned it on him, except that not that much earlier was the whole Rodney King thing, and where whereas like Rodney King got nailed and you know he and because the the cops were let off, the the people rioted all over the place and they did five billion dollars worth of damage and that was back then five billion dollars worth of damage. If that's OJ, why, that's why they wouldn't have. Oh yeah, yeah. That's He's why they could off either way, basically. I think they would have they would have absolutely served OJ up on a plate, but they couldn't because if if they did, I mean, California literally would have. I mean, it would have. Yeah. It, it would have been too dangerous. It would have been martial they law. They interviewed the son though. The first, that's what I thought. Within, yeah. within the first within the first couple of days, they did have Jason in there, and they were interviewing him for a little bit. But then after that, they just did one interview with him, and that was it. And that was right in the beginning. Interesting. So, they had him and they talked to him, uh, but, here, but also the DNA, the only other person that that DNA that they found that was, you know, one in whatever it was, hundred million chance of being the only other match to that would be his son. Right. It's good. You know, if you think about it, I like it. Uh, I like it. I may, I may have a different uh, take on, on OJ now. That's, that's really good again. And I, uh, yeah, reason, that's what I'm saying. I read the whole book. It's a great the, book. It's called OJ is innocent and I can prove it. That's what it's called. Nice. The only reason uh, that I, I like well, your, your take on it is because of the Ramsey thing, uh, because that I was okay. again I was I was in Boulder and we was you know the rumors were swirling for the longest time and it made so much sense that the son, which is why it was you know he did it with an extension cord and it probably wasn't that tough to do. Sure. Mm-hmm. Anyway, what else? Right, uh, right. Did, did she? Uh, did, yeah. Okay. Well, well, Mark, yeah. I got a couple questions, Ross. I got a couple questions really quick. Yeah. Uh, uh, first off, you're talking about fires. Are you were you suggesting the fact that a uh, military team was beaming a certain type of i don't know device and i'm and burning saying it so bad to the point the toilet would just burn is that what you guys are well, not like, not just burn v- vaporize meaning it, you know there's there's if you use oh, really? 
Oh, yeah. The military has been, you know, has the best toys. Let's let's face it. They've, you know, there's a reason why civilians right. don't get ray guns. The military gets ray guns, but they can't let them out. You know, it's there's a reason why you can't, you know, the military can't have phasers in general population. But to test special weapons sooner or later, and this is not me being dark and brooding, but to test special weapons, eventually you're going to have to use real targets. And in this case, right, I'm right, trying for accuracy. Which was okay. Can we take right. out twenty houses in the middle of a suburban neighborhood without without destroying the whole place? And if you okay. and what, what the toilet thing is very interesting. So, like, like, real quick, if you microwave water fast enough, if you, I mean, I mean, really, no, we're not talking your microwave ovens. We're talking, you know, thousands and thousands of times yeah. faster. <laughs> if you, right, if you right, right. If water fast enough, will it water explode? You know, will it actually turn the toilet into a pressurized container and just vaporize? That's what the guy's okay, kind of yeah, I see, I see. Saying, <laughs> right, right, right. Up, and you guys are tying that back to 9/11 type of it thing. Look up, say. look up some a very interesting thing. 9/11 is in layers. I used to think that 9/11 was the crappiest operation in the history of operations. I thought it was, I thought it was shoddy workmanship. <laughs> And yet, every time I saw somebody make a new video on it, they said, oh, yeah, by the way, did you look at this? Hey, did you look at this? And the last one I looked at, look up Pretty Dr. Pretty incredible. Yeah, look up Dr. Judy Wood, Energy Weapons. Uh, you know, oh, I watched her. I watched oh, her. And that's I what mean, was so uh, wild. Yeah, watching, was wild. Wa- watching those really is. foot thick steel columns just poof into nothing. You know, and it's not like they were being knocked down. Right. They literally vaporized in midair. I was going, holy smokes, what mm-hmm. a week. What so, are we? Are, are you saying? Uh, so are you saying that? Um. Uh. What, you know, just you know, planting it with uh, you know to take it down, just the uh, you know demolition route. I mean, would that not be enough? Well, you you want to kill as many birds with one stone as you can. So if you're trying to take down a building, I mean, you're going to implode it with with demolition charges anyway, shape charges. But while yeah, you're right. doing that, while okay. there's so much other stuff going on, why not use it as an opportunity? Yeah. To test other weapons, it's like no one's going to know the difference. Yeah, check it out, yeah. yeah. And and <laughs> sure. look, look that's how, so shady. Look how well that worked up in California. If that was the case, meaning, I mean, when I first heard the story, yeah, it's going, okay. oh yeah, California wildfires. Whoopee. What else? What's what's in the what's on the sports channel? I didn't. I could have cared less. It's a great cover. It is. It's a great cover. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the pictures I'm going, hey, wait a minute, this isn't your normal run of the mill <laughs> fire thing in California. Right. So yeah. I got to look at it. I got it. I got one more for you. Are you a uh, are you a big David Ike guy? Yeah, sort of, sort of. I but I've listened to him. So why? What? Uh, what? I was I, I was just curious about because you know you kind of go into the Bible in terms. I was you know I was wondering how far into the Bible. You know he talked about these archons and and these beings that you know were here to distort reality and. Right. He talks about how they're like brain parasite type beings, and, I don't know, shapeshifters, all that kind of stuff. He's got a good, you know, kind of conclusion in terms of, you know, dual, uh, duality in terms of in- injecting humans with good and evil. The ideas of, you know, the snake in the yep. Garden of Eden. Yep. I was just curious, like, do you, do you take anything from that? I mean, I do. I, I mean, I, I would, my question is, what do you think like the Bible has to do with this whole flat earth and what i mean what's your take on all that I, I it's just think, really odd. i think bibles i think that every every one of the major five religions and by that i mean judaism hinduism buddhism islam and christianity i think they have all pieces to the same puzzle i mean there's a lot of parallels between judaism uh islam and christianity and we all know that i mean they share some of the same stories for god's right. sake no and words there so when it comes to you know the unfortunately here's here's the problem when you're writing religious texts you can only reference things in your technology of the day and if you're not you know and if you don't believe you don't, if you have no understanding on how broken history works then it's really tough to describe things so like if our history only goes back unbroken maybe 5000 years and by that i mean after 5000 years you really can't connect year to year because there just isn't enough evidence you know there isn't enough text right. to, to link i've always but, said like look who mm-hmm, we were right. We were not the first version in here, and we won't be the last. A, a version, a, another civilization. The first version, right? Yeah, right. another civilization I had think to. We, I think Adam and Eve got. 
I think they pissed someone off and got cast down to this realm, and and we weren't supposed to originally even be here on this duality realm that we're in. You but know, but he's like, talking about different versions, what Andy, like different oh, no, versions, like we're the, I don't know. Ross is, Ross is on the right path, and that is, because everyone will eventually ask, it's like, okay, if we're version 7, who was 6.5, but the big question is, who was version 1? And when you start talking about version 1, well, the multiple religions will jump in on that and say, I'll tell you who version 1 was. And that's the you know, that would explain the whole enclosed world, and and that is all right. Are we trapped in here with whoever version was, version one was? Are they remnants? Oh, that sketchy thought. I, <laughs> I haven't well, thought well, about well, haven't that. Heard, wait, haven't you heard so you, Zen Garcia though? Well, Zen Garcia saying that that uh, haven't you heard Zen Garcia this guy? Zen Garcia, whoever. Uh, I know Zen Garcia. Talking about, uh, yep. Oh really? I just heard, heard him for the first time yesterday, and he was talking about how how um uh how the, how something else was already here and had built the pyramids and then humans got cast down because I guess we pissed someone off by biting into something or other and we got cast down to here and the paradise is outside of the dome he's saying something like that oh yeah he's like yeah, right yeah, above yeah, the yeah. dome I, that's where I the believe it is. and let, let me end let me end on this unfortunately the calls are starting to back up but let me end on this it, because of Zen Garcia I had a chance to meet him I had a chance to watch his debate down in Atlanta this year. And he's got some great books really? out there, which are tied to the Book of Enoch. Uh, in fact, the, the, it's literally it's literally titled, I think, uh, the book the Flat Earth and decrypting it through the Book of Enoch. He he says that is one of the he goes it's it is totally a flat Earth book. So check it out when really? you get a chance. Yep. Really. Yep. And wow, uh, that's God, really good. really awesome stuff. Yeah, you're gonna have to get back in the queue because I gotta pick up a whole sorts. I gotta pick up. Uh, uh, all right, Mark, appreciate it, buddy. Hey, hey, no worries. And hey, you know what? Maybe OJ didn't do it. So, think about that, folks. So. <laughs> okay. Talk to you later, guys. All right, man. right on. All right, let's pick up five zero two area code five zero two. Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, Enjoying the non-tornado weather out here. <laughs> so you're out in, in Tornado Alley? Of course, I'm out. Yeah, there's Brian. Hey, Brian. Are you, are you officially doing? in Tornado Alley, by the way? Or are you kind of a little bit west of there or east of there? I'm actually officially in Tornado Alley. Wow, that's well, It goes great 10 free. miles north of me and 10 miles south. They never hit here. Awesome. Awesome. Well... As long as you feel safe and your family. Well, I was here for the one in uh, 99. I did not know that. I took out the big old F5. Oh, yeah. It made me go back in the Army, actually. <laughs> a tornado made you go back in the Army? Yeah, I had a business and all that, and it wiped everything out. I said, screw it. I'm going. That's why I went back in the Army. <laughs> oh, I did not know that. So a tornado changed your yeah. life life path. Yeah, it did. Hmm. So what, uh, well, what's okay, on your... Go ahead. Well, I've been, like usual, I'm monitoring all the news, and I'm glad to say NASA has solved all our money problems. <laughs> I sense a joke here. No, seriously, it was all over the news, and they even had on the, talk, the uh, daytime talk shows. NASA discovered two stars collided, and they predicted it made 10 trillion dollars worth of gold which is 10 billion 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 wow that's impressive seriously it's on fox news it was on uh, nbc and people yeah. wonder why we pick on nasa as much as we do it's because you release the fact the stories you've been releasing over the last year have gotten progressively more silly just silly with a better one and your peanut gallery was hovering over it, was the the Chinese space station. Oh, right. I said, okay, I heard first that off, one first the off, other day. When, I didn't even know there was a Chinese space station. Yeah, it was even in Gravity. Remember, she had to go to the Chinese station? That was a movie. Movies are real. It's on TV. No. Um, so the Chinese space station up there, evidently... Yeah. They said it's lost control and is falling out of orbit. Okay, plausible. Mm -hmm. Except for the fact, this is what pissed me off. So when I lost my faith, more less faith in them. Yeah. They don't know when it's going to hit the Earth. Sometime the end of this year to sometime the beginning of next year. 
What? That's what they said, seriously. So they don't know they when it's going to won't know until, happen. I quote, yeah. six to seven hours before it hits. They won't know when it's going to hit. What a bunch of crap. What else? <laughs> These are the people that track, quote, every space debris, every nut and bolt in orbit. And they can tell us when an asteroid's going to come near the Earth, you know, 10 years out. Right. But they can't tell us when this thing's coming down. With all their gravity, math equations, and speeds, and all that. What was that movie about, when, you know, the three ladies that helped get the... Uh, oh, the one that I didn't watch and up or never watch? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I yeah. watched it. It wasn't too bad. Oh, no, no. I heard good but, things, but I knew the premise. It's like, oh, no, no, Supposedly... No. Well, now, here's the thing. Supposedly, that young lady there can could calculate in her head right there on the board in front of the people where John Glenn was going to land at what time and everything else. Right. That was the whole premise of it because she was such a good math. She could beat the computer. But we're in what, what year is it now? It is 2017, right? It is 2017, yes. And NASA's admitting that they don't know when this thing's coming down? Technically, yeah, we are in the future and we don't know this. And which also means if they don't know when it's coming down, they also don't know where it's coming down. That is correct. Which means it could land in your backyard tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but again, but, if you're in the United States, uh, <laughs> you don't have to worry about much because the United States territory makes up, if I'm not mistaken, including Alaska, only makes up 7% of the world land mass. So there's a 93% chance it's not going to hit the U.S. No. If, if it's up there at all, I have to admit that. If now. it's up there at all. Just right. the fact just the fact that they can't tell someone's coming down when they've given us, they can do the equations to, quote, launch the rockets and get the satellites into position. So why even announce it? Wait, well, I know why they, NASA. I know why you'd announce that. So you announce it and you go, oh, by the way, we don't know when it's coming down. That way, maybe they're expecting something in the sky, and if they spread that story around, the people will think, oh, whatever it is, whatever flashing thing we see tearing through the sky, it's got to be the Chinese satellite. That's good. It's good cover. Right. Because they did, they, it is, because they did announce they won't be able to announce when it's coming down until six to seven hours before. No. And then they just alter the website to reflect that they called it six or seven hours before. It's like, look, our webpage is up six hours before. We, to we totally had it. Right. Well, they would never do that because think about it. By the time they predicted it and told everybody else, and it would already happen, they'd say, "Oh yeah, we knew it was coming down six hours ago. We told you all about this months ago." Wow. It is the biggest bullshit story I have seen them release. It is horrible. They're just getting sloppy. You know, it is. But they can see that we had ten quadrillion amounts of gold, one hundred thirty-five billion. Oh yeah, yeah. You can like, measure that. Yeah, you can measure the gold off of a off of a, a star collision, but you cannot. Yeah, uh, that's just so frustrating. So terrible. I know. Okay. I know. What else? What else you got? What? I just wanted to chime in with that. Well, thanks, man. Oh, I got too much for your show. You know that. I do. I no, do. I just they're they're just getting so sloppy. It's ridiculous. I know. I. Oh, yeah. but do one more quick thing for you hmm. for the uh, radar operator that called in earlier. For all the people that know gravity, mm -hmm. I have one question. But he said everybody has mass. The weight keeps you down. Mm -hmm. Gravity is just what keeps weight down. Can I quote you on that? You got it. I mean, uh, of course you can. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, what, what, why not have heavy weights go up? That doesn't mean gravity is the ball thing and everything else. I think Neil deGrasse Tyson, your hero, said it best. We know what gravity does. We just don't know how it does it. Right. Yeah. We know the symptoms of gravity. Because they don't know how it does it. Yeah. Hmm. So, I yeah. Cool. But no, they're just, they're getting sloppy. And they're pushing, because my wife watches all the daytime shows. And the star thing, she heard on, um, what's her name from Fox? Megyn Kelly's new talk show on NBC. Oh, right. They pushed it onto a 
morning daytime talk show on NBC. How ridiculous is that? Uh, Megan Kelly's having problems, by the way. If you haven't already watched some of the uh, the videos on on that, of course. yeah, I know she is. They they put her into a role where it's hard. like, look, why are you having to do this? Or honestly, though, in all mm-hmm. fairness, she shouldn't have taken the gig to begin with. She should have gone with something else. No, she shouldn't have. She was doing good at Fox. I know. But speaking of which, you heard anything else on Las Vegas? Nope. Las Vegas is dead. I haven't. Puerto Rico is dead. The forest fires are dead. Minus, I. Did you get that article I sent you about the guards, the uh, security guard that? Oh, I'm sorry. Except for that one like article. For his interviews. How, how the the mystery security guard that supposedly exchanged gunfire with the man in the hotel room has vanished. He went to a meeting at the hotel. Yep. What was it, five hours before he was supposed to go on like five different networks? Right. And now he's gone. Yeah. And you know, you know that story. It's like, okay, you talk to him, you're saying, mm-hmm. okay, you got your story. All right, we're gonna pretend to interview you. And if you interview so badly, <laughs> you know, with, with the guys that are controlling yeah. you, it's like, look, you can't be any worse than his brother. But he was apparently. Yeah, then it's like, okay, get in the van. We're going to take you to a special interview place. Okay. And that's it. Yeah, you never. I, I would imagine we're not going to see this guy anytime soon. Yeah. Probably not. Anyway, we're, uh, we're going to break. Hey, I'll give a quick shout. Go ahead, go. Yay, so shout out to Zulu and Wes from Flat Earth News. <laughs> Candy and everybody else. Cool. Have a good show, and I'll uh, let you go to break. And hey, nice. you're going to sing at the next part, right? Yeah, dude, I'd be lucky if I'm conscious the next part. <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, all right. Yeah. Have a good one. Real people, real radio. Initiating the truth frequency. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. This is a call-in show, and we got a bunch of calls lined up. So let's just jump right into it. 254 area code. Let's pick them up. 254, you're on the line with Strange World right now. What's up, Mark? Hey. 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 It's Dana. Hey. What's going on? Yeah. I haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah. So yeah. what's... Man, what's... I just... Go ahead. I just was looking through my emails because I never check my emails. I'm horrible mm-hmm. about that. And I had a email from Patricia to come to hang out, a meetup, and I didn't get it till today. And that was from like a few months ago. <laughs> wow. Oof. Yeah, I sucked. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. It happens. Anyway. I'm I'm still trying to get caught up on emails. So what uh, what's on your mind? Well, I had some things on my mind, but the last two cars threw my brain off to work with the OJ stuff, and I'm really? not prepared for all that. Yeah, the OJ thing actually could be real. I mean, why not? Parents will do a lot for their sons and daughters, a lot more than you might think. I mean, so if he had to protect his son, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I know I'm a parent, so I completely understand. There you go. But my, I was calling in to ask you, what year did our society say the Earth was not flat? Oh, uh, well, the, Coper- the Copernicus thing came in about 500 years ago. So roughly 500 years ago, that's when it started. That's when the, the heliocentric yeah. model was put into place. Yeah, Copernicus was in like mid 1500s or right. early 1500s. Right. But yeah. Columbus was 
in 1492. Right. Although, you got to take that story. I know where you're going with that, uh, with that Columbus was actually trying to prove that the Earth was round. I don't know. He honestly, back then, the more likely that he was looking for money, that he was trying to figure out a way to make a buck. Well, I, I have a very old encyclopedia, mm-hmm. and I was looking into my encyclopedia, and it said the first man that one of the earliest globes that was made uh-huh. was by Martin Behaim, B-E-H-A-I-M. Uh-huh. In the same year, Christopher Columbus did his crap. Oh, sure. I mean, again, remember, there are people on the globalist side that will go all the way back to the Greeks and say that there's always been people poking around at the now whole globe model. But it wasn't until Copernicus that it really jumped into the, for lack of a better word, the mainstream, Billy where people really embraced it. And honestly, there. even he was very you confident from what we could tell about the theory it's because flat. he didn't release his papers. He made sure they weren't released until years after his death. I don't know why well, he, he, he actually didn't release them before his death. He didn't want to, but the Pope kept sending him and begging him. The, the Catholic Church wanted him to publish it. He a, he's an interesting hmm. guy, man. And, interesting. Uh, you know, he believes it. So, Kyrie, so the, the Earth Church is flat, right? pushing for that, yeah. even though, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who so, was it before whatever. him that was news. saying that? That's news. There we go. Uh, I don't know if there was a... And the I Catholic can't... Church was shutting him down, but then they're like, oh, no, we're going to push Copernicus in. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Which was interesting because the church suffered more than anyone once science got its feet on the ground. You know, once science started building its foundation, religion has been on the ropes ever since, until recently. Well, have they, or have they just been pretending that they were? No. Well, maybe at the highest level, sure. Maybe the highest levels they knew, but again, remember your average day-to-day congregation. They, you know, science has been just doing nothing but gaining ground, especially recently. I mean, we come up with new inventions every couple hours now. <laughs> yeah, just like the stars colliding and gold busting. Oh out yeah, stars. yeah, that. No, I mean even stuff that's on the ground level. You know, it's like oh, it's some new little high-tech gadget that reinforces science. Science lays claim well, to anything of technology. As far as the stars colliding thing, that's mm-hmm. just another venue for NASA to say, hey, we need to go into space. It's just fun me, fun me, fun me. We can go get all this gold, you know, or right. it's ridiculous. Yep, I agree. I agree. <laughs> any, uh, any, any other things you got on your mind? Um. No, not a whole lot. I, I've been watching the moon as the sun is getting closer to the moon. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like not yesterday, but the day before, I could see the moon while, like, say the sun is at high noon. Mm-hmm. And the moon is where the sun would be at, like, six in the afternoon. Yeah. And I could still see it. And then today and yesterday, I couldn't see it at all. Oh. Huh. I couldn't find it. Why is well, that? I, I don't still know. be able to see that flipper. I I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. Any you know, uh I always I, have to give my shout outs to my husband and my son and my mother in law. But I also oh, oh yeah, I wanted to ask you, what did you think about Patricia's interview with Flat Out Electric? Uh I thought it was okay. I, I don't get to watch all of her interviews because I'm there's just too much con- too much content out there. But it's all right. I did not actually get to watch it live because it wouldn't load for me live. But uh, I thought it went pretty well. Good, good. And speaking of which, I think she's on the phone. She's uh, she's the next person I'm going to pick up. Oh, you can't tie us in, can you? Well, uh, do, do you want me to tie you in? Do, do you want to say hi to her? I would love to say hi to Patricia. All right. Hang on one second. Let's see if I can pull her in, okay? Uh, okay. Miss Patricia Steer, are you with us? 
Yes, I am. And I, I'm calling in and I know my phone sounds muffled. Everyone's told me that before. But I, I called in because I heard Shanna say that I sent her an email that she never responded to that she got like years after I sent it. Yeah, and, and she's yes. actually she's actually on the line still with us. I know. So <laughs> hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, girl. I'm so sorry. I you know, it told it told me my message never got sent to you via email. It my email says it did not get sent. So I never expected a response. Oh, well, uh, oh, so you wrote it but forgot to send it is what you're saying. No, I never I, got your, I got your response today. <laughs> oh, that is weird uh, from a long time ago. Oh, okay, I understand. Some weird delayed response. Uh, that is really odd. Because anyway, when I email, it said email was not able to be sent. So I never expected you to even get that email from me. Oh, well, the thing is, is that I'm only saying that I got the, the email situation because I heard you talking about it right here. So, uh, okay, well, <laughs> you, can call, you can call me anytime. I sent you my number. Yes, yes. Anyway, well, we're here talking on the phone right now. So uh, the OJ thing was interesting that you guys were talking about earlier. And yeah. I know that, Mark, you and I, when we do the secret show, that I have said I have some doubts that the way the O.J. Simpson case played out in mainstream is true, because now I've kind of learned that almost everything that we see in the media, at least in the past, well, my whole lifetime, you know, sure. since the 60s forward, it's not exactly as they tell us. And the O.J. thing, you know, the, bro the excuse me, the son thing, he could have maybe been protecting his son. That's possible. I mean, that would make him quite the man, in a way, in if a that way. were indeed true. Sure. But yeah, the whole thing, it's one of those things, just like all of this stuff, we'll never know. And it's kind of like Kennedy. It's, you can kill yourself trying to figure it out, just right. like the event that happened in that city I shouldn't mention that is in Nevada. Right. Because if you mention it on YouTube, they take your video down. <laughs> but right, we all right, know right. the city in Nevada that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, it's... It, it, it's very interesting when these things unfold to follow them and to look for basically the clues to what's happening. But in the end, you know, you go through several days of investigating and you come up with pretty much, well, they lied to us again, but I'm not quite sure why or how. And it's frustrating because we can't stop them and we can't do anything about it. Right. Ugh. I, there are a lot of right. secrets that can be hidden in the desert, although I still don't think that Flat Earth is one of them. I think that uh, Flat Earth is too big that even they can't hide that. Yeah, that's true. So Somebody asked me today how many, you know, the question that you always get asked, uh, how many people do you think there's in Flat Earth? And I, my answer was more than you think, because we can't give it a number, but it's more than you think. Yeah, yeah, it's way, it's way more than we think. Because there's, again, I, I, you, you know the quote I'm going to use, which is, look, uh, Spice Girls sold 80 million albums in only two records and i don't know anyone that will admit to it to owning a copy so kind of like a playgirl magazine i guess nobody really ever bought that but i guess they right. a lot of copies at one that's a good point <laughs> that's a good point not to be confused with playboy magazine playgirl magazine the, the version right. for for women and let's face it for quite a few gay men uh yeah nobody bought that <laughs> yeah nobody nobody exactly. Never left the shelves. Weird. <laughs> I still think one of Fort Reynolds is on the shelf somewhere. Uh, there you go. Sure. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to call and say hi and say hello to Shada and pretty much uh, promo the secret show. Right, I right. I will. On Eastern, on uh, unless I'm unless I get worse between now and tomorrow, I plan on me being on the I secret know. show. That's all right. I'll figure out what this yeah. is eventually. But uh, uh, right now, I'm... I think it's um, the Black Death, but you'll get over it. Ah, you know, plague. <laughs> Shake that off. <laughs> no biggie. <laughs> Rub some dirt on it. Drink lots of water. <laughs> really, drink lots of water. That is really almost the, not the cure, but it's the number one thing to do for almost anything. Drink way more than you would normally drink. Like drown yeah. yourself. Patricia, thank you so much for calling in to say hi to me. Uh, thanks for uh, mentioning me. That, got, that kind of triggered me to do so. And we shall talk later. And Mark, hopefully, we'll be talking tomorrow. Talk hopefully. To you later. All right. Bye, guys.
See you both. Bye. 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 All right. I've taken both of those out. And we got 14 minutes left. Who else can we grab? Let's grab Alhambra. Is it Alhambra? I like saying Alhambra, California. All right, California. What's going on? Hey, what's up, man? It's Josh. How's it going? It's going pretty good. What uh, What's going on with you? Uh, nothing much. Uh, just doing a lot of. Uh, actually, I've been on quite a few of the hangouts with uh, Karen's group with the Sun and Moon, the Sun and Moon group. Oh, cool. And uh, had an interesting conversation with a gentleman yesterday named Angel. Not the angel that you met at the meetup over here. Okay. Another angel who actually lives in Huntington Beach, which is kind of cool that he's just as close anyway. Mm -hmm. But he was talking about how the buildings, uh, even in the 30s, they had a building that was drawing power out of just the frequencies and the, the waves around us. Hmm. Uh, it was actually able to suck them in and it was like a transformer, like a, like, and then like a battery kind of, uh, and he was talking about the world trade centers along with, uh, it kind of goes along with the lady that you keep referencing. Uh, Judy was a Judy bloom. Uh, <laughs> no, Judy Wood. No, not not just my bad. That's okay. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, how she talks about like the the weapon that could have been used, and he was saying that the people that were on fire, like what it looked more like they were being microwaved, not burnt. Sure. Uh, and so I just. I just thought it was, we had an interesting conversation about it because he was talking about how those two buildings were taken out and then the new building that's put in can actually also be used as a power generator Hmm. and it's more efficient actually. So not only, yeah, he was talking about uh, a lot of the buildings around being like little generators basically. And then just not letting everyone know. Oh. And then charging everyone all this, like a crap load of money for the power. And they're drawing it from pretty much thin air. Wow. That'd be quite a racket if they could pull that off. <laughs> I, I think they actually might be doing that because uh, I saw them. I, I saw in a video recently where some company is actually trying to come out with that with that tech now. Uh, and I think they're going to have a hurdle to go over because it's already here, you know, it's right. already, uh, they already have it. And kind of like a lot of those other patents and stuff that get bought out, mm-hmm. how they just get buried. Like you just never hear, they just never get put out because they're either too competitive or uh, they just want to keep it secret because it's too far advanced with what they think people would be able to handle at the time. Right. Uh, well, and that's an awesome way to, to keep things hidden as well, because even if later on you come up with something close to that same idea and you try to put in a patent and you put in all the paperwork and everything else and it comes back as saying, Oh, well you can't do it because there one already exists. Right. And you're like, but wait, I, I can't find it anywhere. Like, cause it's not out anywhere. Just some companies bought the patent and is not releasing the, the product. Right. And it's just a way for them to kind of like the whole Smithsonian thing where that's how they bury stuff with the Smithsonian, uh, whenever they find those skeletons of like the giants and stuff, mm-hmm. the Smithsonian is the one that's called because they're the ones that people think. Sure. But we'll take it back call. to them. Yeah. 
And so, yeah, they call them and then they just disappear. And the people, they ask about it and they just get brushed off. And yeah, I've, I've seen all kinds of stories about people that have lost things to the Smithsonian. Wow. Cool. All but right. Yeah. Interesting stuff. So how you been, dude? Uh, you've been busy, man. Uh, uh, I have been busy. You had, you had all kinds of stuff coming up uh, after after you got back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, interviews and fun things. And I, again, I was just invited to the uh, the Sydney conference, the Sydney Flat Earth Conference, which hasn't even, doesn't even have a website yet. So I, I was glad they contacted me. And it's yeah, it's going to be a, a fun. And of course, the the Raleigh things happening in three weeks. So it looks like it's going to be a great, great end to the year. Yeah. You know what? I actually got to uh, talk to Aaron yesterday for a good while. Oh, cool. Uh, he was on a hangout with uh, Sun and Moon. Mm-hmm. And so he he gave like a like a couple hours of like a presentation of the website that he put together. Like, dude, he's straight up trying to build like a flat earth like community. Nice. With like energy, not even energy efficient, like houses and stuff like that, but like community houses that, like I was telling you, they they create their own power. They draw their own power from what's right. around them. Like, yeah, Aaron's Aaron's uh, a good guy. I I was glad that I met him finally down at the uh, the Pasadena meetup. Yeah, he's. Uh, He's really a cool guy to talk to. He was he had a lot to say about like Bitcoin and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it was actually a, a really good uh, little presentation thing that he gave about the website he put together. Cool. Uh. Apparently, he's been working with the angel that you met down here at the meetup. Yeah. Uh. Who actually listens to you? So, what's up, Angel? By the way. Uh, right on. But yeah, like he, I guess he's been working with Angel with, for a little while now on things. Uh, mm. So that's really cool. Cool. Right but on. yeah, dude, I, I'll let you go, man. Uh, I just wanted to call in and say what's up. Uh, it was a pleasure listening to you, like always. Well, thank uh, you. Dude, <laughs> I. I think probably the best uh, compliment Russell Brand gave you was when he told you that he'd listen to you say anything. <laughs> yeah, well, because his voice is pretty high, and uh, mine wasn't, and so yeah, was, again, glad glad that he talked with me, and I'm sure it's not going to be my my last weird interview. So glad glad it happened. Yeah, dude, you just keep pumping out those interviews, man. Going to. Going to. I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna start calling like these like radio shows and stuff like that. Yeah, just drop my name, people. I think, <clears throat> I think I can, uh, I think I can hold your own. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about calling them to be on them to be interviewed or anything. I'm talking about calling them like when they have these call-in shows and the two, the ones that completely believe that the world's a, uh, a globe. Right. And, you know, just like dropping a red pill in there like it's a grenade, you know? Yep. Absolutely hear you. All right, man. I'm going to take one but, more call before the night's over. But thank you, and uh, wherever you are, drive safe. All right, man. Peace out. Have a good night. Bye-bye. All right. We're going to take at least one more call, and it looks like it might be from 510. 510, are you there? Mark, what's going on, man? Pittsburgh, California. What's Pittsburgh, California. What, uh, what's happening out there? Oh, man, man. So much material to cover, man. A, a lot of good call-ins, man. You know, a lot of good materials from the from the uh, fires, which I'm out this way, so I'm going to touch a little bit on that. Okay. From supposedly spaceships falling, but they can't pinpoint when it's going to happen and so on right. and so forth. Right. Uh, to, and the and the and the and the Simpson thing was was very interesting. Uh, right. Angle that I've never heard before. Yeah. Very fascinating. I really really like that one. So cool. yeah, man, just just good calling stuff. 
So before I speak, I'm, let me go and get my little 10 cent on the fire. First of all, being that I'm extremely close to Napa, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going I'm, I'm to I'm take a trip, and hopefully I can get it done before I speak before uh, next week, because uh, next week is my son's birthday, and I'll actually be off work, uh, which is very rare, on a uh, Tuesday. So I'll be able to call. Uh, I'll try to call a little bit earlier after okay. I go out there and look at the place myself, because you know it's it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a sad thing, but it's so true. When it happened, Mark, before anybody was talking about it, it was just in the back of my mind, like, okay, how how natural is this? Because it, around the time when the fire happened, I got to go and I got and I got to do my own homework, even though I'm not here. But from a weather standpoint, Mark, it has not been hot. It has not been hot. Okay. And, and because the, I mean, the temperatures, you know, it's been pretty subtle. I mean, now if it happened about. Uh, like a month ago, two months ago, I'd be like, okay, because I mean, it was burning, sure. but we've been tapering off a little bit. So, and and, and I was like, uh, could this possibly be? Because I'm saying, okay, so because I was telling my wife, I said, so we got the hurricanes and stuff going on the East Coast, and so on and so forth. Okay, what's going? And so naturally, I'm thinking, you know, earthquake. Mm-hmm. Well, fire is the next best thing, you know, that you can do, you know. So yeah, just yeah, that's my little tips on that. All right, all right. So, so, so the reason why I was calling. So I'm just I'm just driving like I always do because I'm always on the road mm-hmm. and I'm looking at a and I was looking at a helicopter just suspended up in the air mm-hmm. and you know when you look at a helicopter you see you know it off in the distance and how small it looks compared to you know the Earth plane itself sure. you just realize how massive this place is and and I mean it's just like it's impossible for this place to be spinning. In a, in a in a helicopter to be to be able to for the earth to spin up underneath it. I don't give a, I don't care what they say, the reason why it doesn't happen, it just absolutely positively makes no sense in the world. Right. I would even go so far as to say this, Mark. Uh, even the numbers that they give us saying that the earth spinning a thousand miles per hour, I didn't think that the earth could spin at a thousand miles per hour just to be able to cover that much distance when you really think about it. Oh yeah. Because when you cause cause when you look at a plane or any uh, planes, helicopters, you know, suspended in the in the in, in, in space as we know space is. Right. Hey, just just it, so it you just know, no you sense. got sixty seconds till the show ends. So whatever you got. Yeah, man, look. Oh man, that's all I got, man. I'm, I'm, I'll be. Oh no, no, no! You can go on for another sixty seconds. Uh, uh, well, no, well, it's just like I said, it's just all I've. But like I said, it's just impossible. It's impossible. I'm gonna leave <laughs> off with this. Okay. So you know, when we're talking to people, we're always trying to find little simple ways to try to get them thinking. And yeah. I've just been using a very, very simple one. I've been asking people, answer me: Have you seen any spaceship, ISS, whatever, float up underneath, uh, up underneath the ball? Zoom in on a piece of landmass, you know, give us a picture shot. And I ask people, have you seen that? And they all say, no, I haven't seen it. And I just walk off. I said, that's kind of interesting, huh? And I just leave with that. You know, just the simple things because the brain can't even comprehend that literally Australia is upside down. It just just doesn't even make no sense when you come up out of this. But excellent show tonight. Thank you. Uh, I hope you feel. Uh, I hope you get better. Uh, okay. Hopefully, hopefully all these calls have helped the process. But, not. but uh, yeah, we, we, we appreciate what you do, and uh, yeah, keep up the good work. Let's keep this thing flat, man. And I look forward to getting up out there, and meeting you, and whoever else I can meet. Shout out to my brother Mark. Y'all, brother, take care. All right, to everybody in the flat world, be blessed. All right, see you next time, guys. Same flat time, Slim. <laughs> Is that a model of the flat, geocentric Earth? <laughs> I had to make a new one. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Dancing.